Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey everybody, welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of September 2013. And uh, we'll start off here with what you guys have seen already, which is a couple of Super Nintendos. Um, this one was yellow, this one was not, except for its front. And I did a whole video on how to remove the yellow from the plastic. Like, if you're having that problem, as a lot of people tend to, uh, I showed you exactly how to get rid of it. And as you can see, it actually worked pretty well. I mean, that's a non-yellowed one. This one was yellowed, so it, it held up pretty well. Though I will not be keeping this one. Uh, my sister bought it from me, so I'm going to give it to her after I finish filming this. Or the next time I see her, I should say. And this one will end up being my backup Super Nintendo. Not much else to say on that. They're both fully operational, and I'm, I'm glad to at least have a backup still. Uh, moving on, Super Nint for the Super Nintendo, uh, I got Doom. This was sent to me by a YouTube user named uh, That Guy on the Right One, and I want to thank him again for doing that. I cleaned up the cartridge quite a bit. It had a big sticker across it. wasn't perfectly salvageable, but you know I did the best I could. And uh, yeah, I just seriously, man, I want to say thank you again for that. You did not have to do that. Uh, as for the game itself, um, I believe it's the only game on the Super Nintendo that uses the Super FX2 chip, although I could be wrong about that. I know that Star Fox 2, before it was canceled, was supposed to use it, so yeah. Uh, it's actually interesting. You can make pirate carts of Star Fox 2 using the Doom cartridge, basically, you know, taking the FX2 chip out of this and then running it through that. Um, people far smarter than I have figured out how to do that. Anyway, again, thank you to that guy on the right one. I did a whole video on him giving me this, as well as a guy named Solaire giving me this and giving me this, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, this is King of Fighters 11 for the PlayStation 2. Uh, he, uh, the guy Solaire, he basically decided to buy this for me absolutely for free, just because he's awesome. Uh, as far as I can tell, his reason was that last month he saw a Playload, and I had actually picked up a couple of King of Fighters games, and he asked me if I had played this one. I said I had not, because I didn't have it, and he said, oh, well, then I'm buying it for you, which, again, Solaire, dude, you did not have to do that, but I really do appreciate that you did. And he had it sent to me directly, and then he decided, for some reason, to send me Dark Souls. Uh, he claims it's his favorite game, so I guess he wanted to share it with me. That or he wanted to, to see if I could beat it or even beat the tutorial, which, no, I could not. I could not beat the tutorial. I died multiple times on the tutorial. This game is just as hard as everyone says it is, but I, to be honest, I haven't played it a whole lot. I need to spend more time with it. I'm sure I could eventually get past the tutorial. So again, Solaire, thank you very much for that. Now, the most obvious pickup of the month, Grand Theft Auto V. I think everyone and their mother has this game. It's the most successful piece of entertainment ever released, and that includes movies. Uh, it's just amazing how much money this game has brought in. $800 million in its first day. You, that smashes, like, every record for, like, anything. So, yeah, not surprisingly, I'm one of the people who got it as well. So I really don't need to say much else about this. I think you've all played it. I think you all own it, or at least a vast majority of you probably do. Um, we will be doing a lot of Game Society Pimps videos with this game. In fact, we've already done a bunch, so I highly recommend you go and check those out. Uh, we are launching Grand Theft Auto V for Pimps, and it should be pretty funny. Uh, but along Game Society lines as well, picked up Scribble Knots Unmasked. Uh, we've done quite a few Scribble Knots videos from the first game, and we intend to do them on this one. Uh, Scribble Knots, if you have a Wii U, Definitely pick up the Scribblenauts games. Those are a lot of fun and highly underrated if you have a Wii U. They're pretty solid exclusives. I mean, I think they're on the PC as well. But as far as consoles go, you can't... Yeah, this is definitely something worth picking up if you have a Wii U and you're a Wii U owner. Um, moving on, Dead or Alive 5 for the Xbox 360. Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate, I should say. Um, <laughs> I did not know this was coming out until the last playload. Someone asked me in the comments if I was picking it up, and I was like, what? I had no idea, so I pre-ordered it, barely got it, like, you know, I pre-ordered it, like, the day before it went on sale, so they gave me the DLC voucher and all that, and what I would say about this is, if you do not already have Dead or Alive 5, definitely get this, definitely. This is my favorite fighting game series of all time, and I, and I don't like fighting games a whole lot. Like, I like them, but I suck at them. I like King of Fighters, obviously. But I'm not that good at it. But Dead or Alive 5, I can actually get into like and spend hours upon hours upon hours playing. And uh, yeah, it's this is definitely worth picking up if you don't have the other version. If you do, I would wait till it's cheaper. Because it has extra characters, it has extra costumes, it has extra maps, extra music, etc. It is not just the DLC added to the disc. 
Actually, frankly, that's my biggest complaint, is a lot of the DLC from the first game is not on here, which that is not that ultimate. If they had included all that, plus all the new stuff, then I would definitely say pick it up. But I gotta say, unless you don't have it, you probably should pass, or at least wait until it's substantially cheaper. But to their credit, they only charged $40 as opposed to like 60. So, uh, interestingly, that's kind of the end of my new pickups, and yet only the beginning. Uh, you guys may recall, at, earlier this month, I posted a video uh, in which I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I picked up a box full of stuff. Well, I'm going to show you the things I picked up, because it's, it's all... <laughs> Alright, let's I'll just show you. I got Andretti Racing, Battle Arena Toshinden URA Ultimate Revenge Attack, Battle Monsters, uh, Bottom of the Ninth, FIFA 98, Fighting Vipers, Hexen, Last Bronx, Last Gladiators Pinball, Manx TT, Mech Warrior 2, Minnesota Fats Pool Legend, NFL 97, NFL Quarterback Club 96, NHL 98, NHL All Star Hockey, NHL All Star Hockey 98, NHL Power Play 96, Quarterback Attack, Robo Pit, Scorcher, Sega Touring Car Championship, Striker 96, Sega Worldwide 97, Tetris Plus, Thunderstrike 2, TNN, uh, or ti yeah, TNN, Time Warner Interactive's vir VR Virtual Racing, VR Soccer, VR Golf 97, Virtual Open Tennis, or vir Virtual Open Tennis, TNN Hardcore 4x4, okay, so that's just Time Warner, uh, not, not TNN, uh, World Series Baseball 98, World Wide Soccer, Wing Arms, and Winter Heat, all for the Sega Saturn. Now you're like, holy crap. I mean, <laughs> so if you're into the Sega Saturn, damn. I mean, you can tell that's the thing about that store I went to is I have never in my life seen that many Sega Saturn games all at one place, all boxed, all complete and all cheap. I do. I mean, for all this, all these Sega Saturn games it was less than a hundred dollars. Now to some of you, I mean, it was basically around a hundred dollars, but to some of you that it's like, wow, that's a lot of, you know, money and those games are a lot like crap, you know, there's a lot of sports in there. You're kind of right, but at the same time, to those of you who collect for the Saturn, you know that's a ridiculously good deal. So if you are anywhere near Fort Wayne, anywhere, like any number, I don't know how many hours would, I would say is worth it. I only drove three hours and I would say it was totally worth it. You know, if you like to collect for the Saturn, definitely go out there. They still have a bunch of stuff. Like, I only picked up the ones that I didn't have, that they had, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. It was it's was totally worth going to, to get all of this awesome Sega Saturn stuff. Um, I'm not gonna go so far as to claim I'm trying to get all the Sega Saturn titles yet because I think that's kind of impossible. But uh, I would like to try and get as many of the US ones at least as I can. And I think this, I mean, I already have a decent Saturn collection, but this really enhances the numbers. So I'm really happy about that, and I want to give a big shout out to my buddy um, Jonathan Jakobovitz over at LHR Gaming for telling me about this in the first place and being like, yeah, you got to go check this out. They have a bunch of Saturn stuff, and he was totally right. But uh, yeah, I, obviously I haven't had enough time to actually sit there and like play all these, so that's why I'm not really giving you much feedback on them. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all my pickups. I know it seems like a lot, and it kind of is, but I, remember, all of these came at one time. The cases are huge and they weren't really that much money. But I pretty much I kind of blew my monthly gaming budget on it a little bit, it, it, you know, including this stuff as well. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's pretty much the end here. I want, again, I want to say thank you to Jonathan. I want to say uh, thank you to Solaire. Thank you to that guy in the right one. And thank you to our fans over at Game Society who helped us get this in the first place. Uh, so that's it, everybody, and thank you all for watching.